Isaiah 58, verse 12. I want to speak just prophetically here this morning for about the next 25 minutes or so uh, and give you something that the Holy Spirit was putting inside of my heart. How many know it really helps to go through challenging times when you have a clear perspective of where you're going and what you're about? In fact, you can deal with anything if you have a clear perspective of where you're going and what it's all about. And when you have confidence that you have victory on the other side, then you can face any battle. Come on, amen. Don't you, don't you just hate it when somebody, you know, you, 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 like the Cowboys are playing at noon uh, here in a few minutes over in London, and so a bunch of people are DVRing it, and you know, whatever. but you know, you get home, by the time you get home and get a done lunch and everything like that, and the game's over, uh, you don't want to know what the score is. It removes the fun and the excitement, but, but I find watching the Cowboys anymore is not exciting. It's stressful. And I got service Sunday night, so I just can't handle the stress that distracts me. When they're winning, it's fine, but, you know, when they're fighting, it's, it's, it's uh, So I would rather just know and get it settled with. <laughs> and I'm kind of that way with, with the kingdom, you know. I don't, I don't, I don't want to live my life not knowing what's going to happen. I want to know what's going to happen. And I know what's happening. Somebody say we win. We're living in dangerous and challenging times. We're seeing a shift. Unlike anything in my lifetime happening in America. An, a rapid moral decay. A rapid shift away from Christianity and from the foundations of everything that's biblical. We're seeing people uh, being shut down. You can speak about all kinds of things. You can speak about radical homosexuality, you can speak about Islam, you can even speak about witchcraft, but you can't hardly talk about Jesus in school anymore. People are being fired because they have a, G a Bible found on their, on the, on, on their desk. It's uh, all of these things that are going on. We see the, the flood tide of the assault that's taking place. Just two years ago, there was only one state that had legalized gay marriage. Now, because of the court system, not because of the people, but because of the court system, now 36 states it's legal. And it's coming to Texas. It's not that we voted for it, not that we want it, but the federal radical court system is taking over and they're di dictating. And now, and now the media is declaring that the issue is settled, the battle is done, you just need to give up and give, up, give over. See, the devil always likes to declare his victory before he even has one. Because he knows as long as you fight, you can't lose. If you don't quit, you can't lose. Somebody say, I can't lose. Say it say, I can't lose. But what if, what if there's not a big group of us? That doesn't matter. You can't lose. One is a majority with Jesus. Come on, amen? You can't, so the devil does works overtime trying to get you to quit. Because he knows if you don't quit, you can't lose. <laughs> Hallelujah. Turn your neighbor and say, I can't lose. Come on, I like playing. See, see, I'm, I'm a competitive person, but I'm smart. I play games where I know I can win. I ain't playing you in basketball. Me in basketball is like the Pope and break dancing. It's ugly. I play some racquetball. I, 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 I want to win. At least I want a good fighting chance to win, but I... See, my son James, when we play racquetball, when he plays somebody else, if they're really uh, not very good, he's so merciful and nice, he just kind of lobs them little shots and everything. I just kill them. I just wipe them out. In fact, we had a young man here, he's gone back to Ohio, living in Ohio, Mike Clevero. Some of y'all remember Mike, Mike, uh, we love Mike, but Mike talks trash. <laughs> And so one game, I was trying to encourage him, all right? So I'm just kind of half playing. And I'm allowing him, you know, I'm not fighting hard at all. And he gets to six points in the games of 15. He gets six points, and he says, oh, Pastor Steve, I'm getting you now. I got you now. Oh, Pastor Steve, you're going down now. I got you now. And I was like, that's it. 
and I said, I, I, had, I had like five points. And I, I said, then I said, you're not even going to touch the next 10 serves. <laughs> bam, bam, bam. He couldn't even <laughs> touch it. I said, now what you saying? <laughs> huh? There was not a battle. And that's how you are with, with, when you got God on your side. It's not even playing like clever. The devil will talk some trash. He might get a point here or two, and he'll talk some trash. I got you now. I got you, America, now. I got you under my thumb now. I got you all going to be gay everything, y'all going to be this, and y'all going to be anti-Christian, and, and secularism's taking over. I got you now. And we sit there and say, oh, yeah? You ain't even going to touch the next 10 serves. Come on. Huh? Devil be walking out of your next prayer time. He won't be walking out. be crawling out on crutches and band-aids. They will, yeah, they will cut loose the little kids. Get some seven, eight, nine-year-olds. Shakara Bashane. We say, oh, yeah, devil, we're going to stick a seven-year-old on you. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. Somebody say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. <laughs> so we see the flood tide. We see things going on. I kept hearing the media talk in the last few weeks. They kept talking about the, in the issue of gay marriage and, and, and all these, this radical uh, homosexual agenda, which is not just about, it's not about gay rights. It's about a radical agenda. Yeah. It's about forcing us into, in, and pushing that. Two, less than 2% of the population are active, participating homosexuals, and yet they, they literally, they're claiming the battle's over. They got it won. It's done. I got news for that spirit of the enemy. God's about to do something. But he wants, they want the Christians to sit back and shut up. Don't speak about that issue. Don't speak about morality. Don't speak about righteousness. Don't speak about real love. Don't speak about... Don't say that Jesus is the only way. You got to be tolerant. Isn't it amazing that the issue of tolerance is only one-sided? We have to be tolerant of all their junk, but they don't have to be tolerant of our faith. Huh? Now, I'm saying all this to say, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Because in every generation, in every season of assault, in every time that there is a flood tide of the enemy, the Bible says when the enemy comes in, now, we've always read it this way. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord raises up a standard against him. But I, I like it this way. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord raises up a standard against him. Because God's the author of the flood. And so the enemy comes in. Like a flood. Someone say like a flood. Like a flood. Like a flood. The Spirit of the Lord raises up a standard. Yeah, that's good. Raises up a standard. He raises up those who are carrying and marching with a holy standard. That will push back the flood tide of the enemy. Because God has always had a remnant. God has always had a remnant. I have a title to this morning's sermon. Message, prophetic declaration, are you the remnant or the residue? Are you the remnant or the residue? The remnant is a part of something that is left when the other parts have gone. But the remnant is a remnant, and I'm going to talk about that for in a few moments. The remnant is a remnant because they're holding on to what many have lost because they have an expectation of it being restored. The residue is what's left after everything else has been used up. 
I don't want to be a Christian residue. I want to be a Holy Ghost remnant. God has given us prophetic words in this ministry. We've used around the world, but a prophetic word that speaks of you and speaks of the people around the world that are receiving from this ministry. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 12, beginning with verse 12. This is a prophetic word for us. Someone say, this is a word for me. Those from among you, that's y'all, shall build the old waste places, shall raise up the foundations of many generations, shall be called the repairer of the breach and the restorer of streets to dwell in. If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord honorable, and shall honor him not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words. The three characteristics of a remnant. They're not doing their own ways, they're not finding their own pleasures, and they're not speaking their own words. I'm going to say that again. The three elements of a remnant. They're not doing their own ways. They're not finding their own pleasures. And they're not speaking their own words. God says, when you do this, then you will delight yourself in the Lord. And I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth. And feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. He said, there are going to be those from among you that shall build the old waste places and shall raise up the foundations of many generations. That doesn't mean building a foundation so much for a new foundation for future generations. The word there literally means to go back to the old foundations and raise them up. Somebody has got to be able to tap into the anointing of a Charles Finney or a John Wesley. Some, come on, somebody, amen. Somebody has got to tap in to a, a George Whitfield. Somebody's got to tap in to, to the revelation and the anointing of the fathers of the faith. Someone's got to be able to tap in to the revelation that turned the world upside down. Somebody's got to be able to tap in to what happened in the day of Pentecost when they were in that upper room and there came the sound of a rushing mighty wind. Somebody's got to be able to tap in. Somebody's got to be able to tap into the foundations that were on Stephen. That when he went in and it literally turned a city upside down. Or Philip led a mighty city in revival. Somebody's got to tap in. Somebody, somebody, somebody. Back in the late 1960s, the foregone conclusion by everybody was that the Soviet Union was here to stay forever. That there was no way of stopping them. We just have to appease them. We just have to contain them. Because this enemy is too great. When a most unlikely individual, a man, an actor, who was known for bedtime with Bonzo, his name was Ronald Reagan, begun to speak in the late 1960s as he was running for governor of California and begun to speak that the Soviet Union must be conquered and come down. Even his fellow Republicans says, that's crazy talk, shut up. You can't go there. Don't, that's too dangerous talk and it will never happen. He said, not only can it happen, but it must happen. We cannot allow this disease of communism to continue to penetrate. We can't sit back and just try to operate in containment. We've got to deal with destruction. Guys, hear me carefully. Hear me carefully, remnant. Hear me carefully. You cannot make a peace treaty with the enemy. We learn many truths from the Bible. When God told the children of Israel to go in and possess the promised land, he said, utterly drive out and destroy your enemies. Because any enemy you make a peace treaty with, will spend, you'll spend the rest of your life being tormented by him. Don't make a peace treaty with lust. Boy, it's quiet now. Come on. Don't make a peace treaty with pornography. Are y'all hearing me? Don't make a peace treaty with just a little white lie. Don't make a, he said, utterly drive that enemy out. 
Utterly drive it out. I said, utterly, don't, don't see the devil wants to make peace treaties. Oh, that, that enemy's not that big of an enemy. It is an enemy. you got to utterly drive it out. Ron, Ronald Reagan had that understanding. He kept speaking it. He was a lone voice. Kept speaking it. Spe- kept speaking it. Became governor. In, se- in 68, I believe it was. 72, became governor again. He ran in 76 for president and got resoundingly defeated in the primaries. But he kept declaring it kept declaring it. And it wasn't until the right atmosphere opened up. See, as long as people felt like we weren't doing so bad, they didn't want to deal with the enemy. But then we saw what happened and the failure, of course, that happened in Vietnam. And we were dealing with that. People were then skittish because the battle was so terrible and they didn't want to go to battle. Then we had the Iran Contra, I'm, I'm sorry, the uh, Iran hostage crisis. How many of y'all remember that? 400 and some odd days, 69 days, I think it was, that our, these, our people were held in the embassy there in Tehran. And I remember watching this. And I remember watching our president at the time, Jimmy Carter. And that Failed. How many of you remember those of you that are old? How many remember the failed rescue attempt? That our, our military helicopters broke down in the desert. They broke down. We had so decimated our military. We had so taken away the funding because we're now a generation of peace. Wait, wait, we won't go there right now. Right? I'm going to leave that alone right now. It doesn't. You can make whatever reference to history and modern that you want. Huh? And they said, and we were a joke. We were a laughing stock. But there was a man by the name of Ronald Reagan running for president. And he put out the word and he told Iran, if I get elected, the first thing I'm doing, the moment they sign me in, is I'm going after you. He got sworn in. And within an hour or two, all the hostages were miraculously released. And I'm telling you, when the devil realizes that you're serious and that you're going to use all the power and authority that you really have, he will back down. And then he stood up a couple years later and he declared that Russia was an evil empire. And the media freaked out. Oh, there comes World War III. He's going to kill us all. Oh, but he knew what he was talking about. And he took on the enemy. And he, he built an arms race. And he, he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to out-militarize you. And I'm going to economically crush you. And within seven years, the Berlin Wall came down. And the, the Soviet Union was disbanded. My God. Because one man, a remnant, had the courage to stand up and say right is right and wrong is wrong and and freedom is freedom. God is God. Huh? How much more so you? Somebody say, we're a remnant. You're a remnant. Sometimes when you feel like a remnant, you feel like Elijah. Remember when Elijah went to Mount Carmel? 400 prophets of Baal. Called fire down from heaven. Standing up. The whole nation of Israel had backslidden. The whole nation of Israel, a massive majority of them, had run to serve Baal. He calls down, demonstrates the power of God. Calls down the fire from heaven. The people say, yeah, we're with you. They kill the prophets of Baal. But I believe that Elijah actually expected Jezebel to repent. Huh? He thought, how could she not repent? Instead, she said, I'm going to kill him. Don't expect just because a miracle showed up for the world to all of a sudden go, oh, Jesus is real. Come on, amen. Sometimes they'll say, kill him. Huh? I, remember, I remember hearing someone declare, I've heard preachers or people declare this, oh, God's going to release miracles that no man can deny. They're going to deny it. 
they deny the resurrection. If they can deny the resurrection, they're going to deny anything. Come on, amen. That's just not true. You're going to think, oh, if we just get this miracle, if we just get that manifestation. No, no, not, not, they'll, they'll turn. Some of them aren't going to turn. But that doesn't deter the remnant. But Elijah, he got discouraged. He went and ran and he hid. Fell asleep. Because that's what you do when you're depressed. Come on, amen. Sometimes sleep is the best thing you do. You need to shut your brain down. Sometimes when you're all worked up in the brain, take a nap. And put some Holy Ghost music on or something. So, the angel came, woke him up, gave him some food. The other thing you need to do is eat right. Listen, God's natural. He knows if, you don't, if your natural body is a mess, your, phys- your spiritual man's going to have a problem. So, he, so, so anyways, so he, he fed him. He gave him, and he went back to sleep, woke him up. God spoke to him, put him to the cave. God spoke to him, and, and he, he said, I'm all alone. He said, you're not all alone. God said, I have 7,000. I have reserved for myself. You think you're all alone? I got 7,000 that have not bowed their knee to Baal. I have a remnant. Someone say God has a remnant. Now watch this. Watch what God, I want you to put these pieces together. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. Let me give you these real quick. Thus says the Lord God, stand in the ways and see. And ask for the old paths, where the good way is, and walk in it. Then you will find rest for your soul. See, the devil always wants to... Have you, have you noticed that there's a spirit today that belittles that which is older? Well, I can save 15 minutes or more on my car insurance. Well, I'm on e-insurance. I can do it in seven minutes. So they have those funny commercials. I put you up on my wall. I defriend you. Take off the picture. Y'all, y'all, y'all know the commercial, right? They're trying to paint Geico as old and e-insurance as new. Don't be a part of the old. You'll miss out. Don't be a part of the old. Don't be a part of the old. Don't be a part of the old. And you think, well, that's kind of cute. No, that's demonic. Because God is always saying, go back to the foundations. He said, go back to the root. I am. God calls himself the ancient of days, not the modern of times. He said, I'm, I am the foundation. I am the alpha. I am the beginning. I am the first. I am before all things. Can we go back? Come back to the former ways. Come back to the ancient ways. Come back to the course of revival that set this nation on fire. Come back to that. Ask for that. And in that path, you will find rest for your souls. Stop looking for the latest and greatest. Stop looking for the newest and the fanciest. Stop looking for the new way that God is going to do it. He's going to do it this way and that way and and cover this. He said, get back to the foundation. Get back to the foundations. Get back to the former past. Now you say, but God, the Bible says, God, behold, I'll do a new thing. Yes, he always does a new thing, and he always builds it on the old foundation. Watch what... Jesus said, Isaiah 61, where the Bible says Isaiah 61, but Jesus quoted this in in Luke chapter 4. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor, beginning with verse 1. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of the vengeance of our God. Now it continues, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning. Now, I want to stop there for a second. If you go over to Joel chapter 2, we love Joel 2. And afterwards, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, right? And your sons and daughters shall prophesy, right, 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 right? If you go back to verses before that, it talks about mourning the priest, and we are kings and priests, mourning between the porch and the altar, weeping between the porch and the altar. Why? Because they're crying out to God because of the condition of society in their day. 
So Jesus says, the Spirit of God is upon me to heal, to bring comfort, to bring deliverance and restoration, and I'm going to comfort those who mourn. And I'm going to console those, those who are mourning and those who are broken. Where? In Zion. Zion speaks of the church. Those who are mourning because of the condition of the church. I'm going to come. My spirit is going to be released. And I'm going to comfort them. I'm going to give them beauty for their ashes. Ashes speaks of fasting and prayer. And their brokenness. And the oil of joy. In their, when they're in the place of brokenness, crying out for me. I'm crying out for, oh my God, Rabu Shahande. When they're crying out, God, save our country. God, turn the church around. God, bring revival. God says, I'm going to give you beauty for ashes. Beauty, what is the beauty? I'm going to release a new dimension of the anointing of salvation because I'm going to beautify you with salvation, the Bible says. And I'm going to release you the oil of joy for the joy of the Lord is your strength. If you break, if you cry out for a generation, if you'll be a remnant and not be the residue, but be the remnant that says, oh God, we're going to stand firm. We're going to stand for holiness. We're going to stand for righteousness. We're going to stand for morality. We're going to stand for Jesus. He says, get ready. The Spirit of the Lord God is going to come upon you. An anointing for salvation. And an anointing of joy. And a new strength will I give you. Then I'm going to anoint you with salvation. I'm going to anoint you with joy. And the garment of praise. Now, y'all didn't hear me. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Now, we like to talk about that when we're depressed. But the context of theirs is those who are being heavy because of the oppression of what's happening in their day. They're broken. They're mourning. They're fasting. They're crying out to God for revival. He says, I'm going to give you a salvation anointing. I'm going to give you a joy anointing. And I'm going to release a new sound of praise. For with the new sound of praise, you're going to mount assault with the high praises of God in your mouth and a two-edged sword in your hand. You'll execute vengeance upon the heathen and judgments upon the people. You will bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. My God. Shakara Mashande. Someone say the garment of praise. It's an anointing. You're going to be clothed. Yeah, I'm not talking to anybody here right now. Someone say, this is the remnant. The remnant's going to have an anointing for salvation. The remnant is going to have an anointing of the joy of the Lord. And the remnant is going to walk with covered in a garment of praise. Songs, new songs are going to rise up out of you. New sounds are going to rise up out of you. People ain't going to wonder why you're in the hospital when they just told you you're going to die really soon if you don't do what we tell you. And you're saying, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me blesses. And they're saying, are you in denial? No, hallelujah. I got a garment of praise. Because our God is greater, our God is stronger. <laughs> Woo! Why is he going to give you the beauty for your ashes, the, the, the anointing of salvation? And I don't mean just getting born again. I'm talking about being made whole, spirit, soul, and body. Why is he going to give you a new anointing of joy? Why is he going to give you a new garment of praise? Verse 3 still. That they may be called trees of righteousness. A tree. Woo! Deep roots, big, strong, casting a mighty shadow that many can come under. Tree, someone say righteousness. Say righteousness. The planting of the Lord. God says those who are crying out, that they're the remnant, that are crying out for this generation, that are crying out for their present generation, that are seeking for revival. He said, I'm going to anoint them with an anointing of salvation. I'm going to take them into new dimensions. I'm going to anoint them with a, jo a garment or with the oil of joy. I'm going to just drip joy all over them. I'm going to give them a garment of praise, and they are going to be trees of righteousness. They're going to be planted by me. And it's for a purpose that he may be glorified. 
God says, I'm planting you as a remnant. I'm planting you. I'm going to do it so that I may be glorified. And then this is what he says. You're going to recognize this from what we just read. Verse 4, and they shall build the old ruins. And they shall raise up the former desolations. Someone say, I shall rebuild the old ruins. Say, I shall raise up the former desolations. Say, I shall repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. That's why God is raising you up. That's why God is raising up a Zadok generation. A Zadok generation. Zadok. The priest Zadok carried the, uh, the glory. Born of Shukran. The priest Zadok, he was the one. High priest that carried the ark. When David was bringing the ark back to Jerusalem, he was the one that carried it with the other Levites and carried the ark and brought the glory back. So the Zadok generation is a generation that, is restore, that restores the glory back to the church. The sons of Zadok are the ones when the Babylonian captivity happened. Babylon or Babel actually means mixture. It actually means mixture. What happened during the Babylonian captivity is the Israelites were not taken and put into prison. They were just brought over into Babylon. When they were in Babylon, they were told, we will give you your own land. We will let you engage in commerce. We will even let you be blessed. You just have to accept our foreign gods. Just accept our culture, and it's okay. We will tolerate you. We'll even give you a realm to carve out, and you still can do your little Jewish thing. Just don't fight our culture. Sound familiar? We'll leave you alone as long as as you don't judge us. We'll leave you alone as long as you don't preach to us Jesus is the only way. We'll leave you alone. We'll engage in commerce with you. We'll tolerate you. We'll carve out a little section for you. The little religious section. A little, nice little Christian section. Up there. We don't mind them. Because we can't, you know, they, they don't fight us. But during that time, the sons of Zadok, See, the priests, other priests, they joined in with that. Because the people said, hey, we like the prosperity. We, the people said, by the way, it wasn't the priests that let them, it was the people. The people said, no, 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 don't, don't come here, priests, and ruffle these feathers. So you need to minister to us before our idols. You need to minister to us before our idols. And that's kind of what we're doing today. We have churches, and I'm not trying to get speak picky here guys but we have churches that open their services with secular rock songs how, how would you respond if someone put a big buddha doll up here and say come on in so that the buddhists in the neighborhood would feel comfortable and then after the at, then, then once we start the service we move him off and we put we put jesus up there because in that what we're doing we're putting a false idol and then we're trying to then, then we try to sneak in the real mixture but the sons of Zadok, the sons of Zadok would not compromise. As a result, they were, they were, they were a remnant. They, 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 were, they were looked down upon by, by, the, by the regular people, the regular Jewish people, because they liked their prosperity. In fact, it was the wealthy people. Because the first people that got captured were the talented ones and the gifted ones and the business people and the wealthy ones. And they were the ones who established this. Isn't it interesting that... The Assemblies of God was the, holy, the hub of the Holy Ghost move of God in the Pentecostal movement until they got accepted by the wealthy people. Some of you are old enough to remember when Pentecostals were the churches on the other side of the tracks. But when we got on the good side of the tracks, we had to get rid of the Holy Ghost. We had to get rid of the manifestations and the gifts of the Spirit. Because the people on the good side of the tracks are uncomfortable with those things. And then we became more and more compromising. More and more compromising. Oh, but Brother Steve, look at the big churches we're building. Look at all the things where this happened. Really? Look at the culture. 
Look at the children. Only 4% of American children, used to be 50%, only 4% have a biblical worldview anymore. 4%. 94% of all young people that attend church during junior high and high school stop going to church by the time they're 22 years of age. Only 4% of a return. There's got to be a remnant of the people that believe that God's word is true and God's word works. There's got to be a hungry group of people that say, you know what, no matter how bad the culture gets, no matter how much Babylon is screaming, we're going to keep charge of the temple. We're going to keep charge of the temple. Why? Because it's not for you. Somebody's got to keep the flame burning for the next generation. Somebody's got to be able to say to their son or daughter, when everybody was compromising, when the church was going so astray, when, when morality in America was, was running away from God, we stood strong, we fasted, we prayed, and God heard our prayers, and He anointed us with the spirit of salvation, with the oil of joy, with the garment of praise. And He made us trees of righteousness, and he planted us and he became glorified when the mighty revival swept because somebody was willing to be a remnant, not a residue. Someone was willing to hold on instead of just being the leftovers of a former move. Someone was hanging on for a future move. Someone was saying, we're going to find the ancient past. Someone's going to say, we're going to hold on to revival. We're going to hold on to the word of God. We're going to hold on to holiness. We're going to hold on because we're believing that our children are going to live in a country that once again bows its knee to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm willing to fight for it. 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 It's what we're all about here, church. Come on, it's what you're all about here, church. Somebody, come on, grandmas and grandpas. Come on, moms and dads. Come on, young people.